What is up, guys? Bring you guys a new video on the channel. If you guys clicked on this video, you guys are wondering how to use chargers or possibly learning some more info on this weapon type in Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 has been out for a couple months now, and um, if you guys are just starting out and or just wanting to know a little bit more information, maybe some, some stuff you guys did not know before, uh, stick to the end of this video. And if you guys want more videos like this in the future, if you guys like my format, this video did take me a long time to make, so I would appreciate a like. And subscribe if you guys want more videos like this in the future. And let me know if you guys want more videos like this, uh, like what weapon type, if you guys want an ink brush, blaster, shooter, I don't know, umbrella. Um, I can go over those weapon types as well in a similar video in the future if you guys want those. Um, we're going to get right into it. A complete charger guy. I'm going to go over a lot of stuff in this video uh, for you guys. Uh, we're going to get right into it with the pros and cons of using a charger. Now, there's a few different chargers in the game, which I'm going to be going over all of them in depth and letting you guys know my opinions. I've been using chargers pretty much since I've, I've begun uh, playing Splatoon 2, and I'm honestly say at this point I'm probably like a professional, at least at this weapon type. Uh, I'm, it's probably like my best weapon to use in the game, and it's like the most frequent weapon. Um, number one of the pros, it's a great weapon for supporting your team. brings a lot of pressure for rival teams and their teammates. Uh, you're constantly going to be splatting. It's one of those weapons where you just sit and just snipe down opponents, uh, which is really one of the things I really like. A uh, very, very fun weapon to use. If you just want to sit far away and uh, spot a crouch and just sit and camp and snipe opponents from around the corners uh, from far away, this is the weapon for you. Um, it allows your opponents, uh, you just splatter your opponents and then your teammates can pretty much pick up the slack. Uh, it's not really one of those weapons that you're going to be on the front lines, you're more going to be always in the background, uh, pretty much just helping out your teammates. And uh, it's also one of the, it is the longest weapon range weapon in the game, so that's always kind of cool. Uh, a lot of different stuff like that, again, very, very cool niche, longest range weapon in the game, um, with being the leader for K. Leader 4K, I think, is the longest range charger. Um, we got a few cons of chargers. Uh, number one, very susceptible to close range attacks and easy to be sneak splatter from behind. I have, in pretty much every battle, if you're on like ranked battles, um, if you get above like pretty much like B plus up into the A tiers or possibly S tier, uh, I haven't personally never been in S tier yet. I'm working my way there, hopefully. I just have kind of a shitty connection that every time. I try working my way up to the S tier, I end up hitting like communication errors and DCs, and that's how I've never really got there yet, but once you get started, start going up in the higher ranks, uh, you're going to be targeted out very, very easily, you're going to be splattered from behind, if you're, especially if you have like a scope, if you're using the splatter scope or the leader 4k scope, um, you're very, very susceptible to being splattered from behind or getting rolled over with rollers or ink brush or whatever, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you can defend it against it as well with uh, sub weapons, which I will go over once we go over in uh, in depth to all the uh, all the uh, different types of chargers, which is kind of cool. I'll let you guys know how you can probably um, just defend yourself at least some of the times from that kind of stuff from happening. Uh, you're going to be the most targeted uh, in battle, especially if you're getting a lot of splash and causing a lot of rival team problems. Um, Pretty much example of this, say uh, Inkblot Art Academy, where you take that for example, because that's a kind of good track. There's a few different places where you can snipe very easily there. Uh, you're just sitting up there. You're sitting up on the uh, the ledge. I'm just gonna say a ledge, just because I really don't know what you really call it. But um, you're constantly splatting your opponents. Uh, it's gonna get to the point where they get really, really annoyed, and they're actually gonna take time to hunt you down and pretty much keep splatting you. Uh, it gets that bad sometimes, especially when you get into higher ranks and especially in league battle. So just a little bit of word caution there. Um, just because they put so much pressure on the opposite team and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it also is a very reliant on your team and sometimes uh, track mode and uh, to be at full potential. I'm going to go over this a little bit more in depth just because uh, you can be probably the best charger user like ever. Um, but if you don't have a team, your team doesn't know, does not know what they're doing. They won't go. They won't advance. Uh, say it's like clam blitz. They won't advance. They're constantly on defense. They're never on offense. You're you're getting destroyed. You can be the best sniper ever, but as long as you don't have decent teammates, 
uh, you ain't gonna be winning most matches, honestly. Um, I also think sni or I was gonna say snipers, but chargers in general really ain't the best weapon class for turf war. So in that game mode, I would say you have to either. There's so many different options. The worst option in turf war is a charger. Chargers are meant for league and uh, ranked type battles. Um, I also say what are the probably like the most unuseful modes I'd say and depending on the track would be clam blitz. Clam blitz is probably one of the most unuseful modes for chargers. Uh, I think ink brushes and uh, shooters are really really uh, viable in those. Apart from that though it's really good in rainmaker. Uh, it's really good in splat zone. There's also tracks that are going to be like uh, better than others. They just have a little bit more advantage for chargers and stuff like that. So. I will not be covering the Bamboozler, MK, or the GooTuber in this video. If you guys want a separate video for that, let me know in the comment section down below by hitting that like button. That would be awesome. Uh, if you guys want me to go over those two weapons in detail. Uh, I do have some experience with those, but they're a little bit different than like all the other chargers. So that's why I didn't cover them in this video. Uh, we're going to get right into it. The Classic Squilfer. Uh, the Classic Squilfer actually has a decent range, charge ability. Comes with the point sensor and the ink armor. I'm going to go over for you guys right now. I do apologize if I'm a little bit off shot in this as well in these demonstrations just because I was actually looking at it through the camera lens or the, uh, from behind the camera and there was a slight bit of lag which kind of caused me to be off um, off shot on most of these uh, demonstrations but the Classic Swelfer has decent range. It's not the longest range about all the chargers. It has about I think about the same range as the Bamboozler. Um, has the point sensor which allows you to track your opponents which I really don't don't think it's really that viable, honestly. I guess if you want to follow your opponents around after you get splatted, then I think that's the only way it's really like decent. Ink armor is very good as well. I mean, it's viable for this just because you have a close range. You charge up very fast and you're able to get uh, some damage on your opponents, especially with ink armor up. You can take one full hit before retreating. Next is going to be the splat charger, probably the most standard uh, charger in the game, honestly. If you're going to be beginning out and you're going to be starting out, the Splat Charger is the one you want to start with. Uh, decent range, decent charge, charging speed, and decent mobility. Comes with probably two of the best, uh, probably one of the best subs and one of the best specials in my opinion for a charger in the game. Um, being the Splat Bomb and the Stingray. Stingray is great for like, Skype, for, like scoping out opponents and just pretty much shooting across uh, the field and just getting splats from way far, like, have, like way across the field honestly. Um, splat bombs are great for uh, defense as well. So you have like a point that's going to be coming up on on your close. You can throw that down right beside you and possibly get a splat before and uh, retreat while that's happening. Uh, very very good, honestly. It's very very solid for beginners. Uh, if you're beginning with like the uh, what you call it um, in in chargers, uh, then it's probably going to be the probably the beginning one along with the fire fin which we'll be going over here next uh, as you guys can see I, you can just pretty much go through walls stingray allows you to go through walls as well so if your opponent is just trying to hide you you can pretty much just sling it back and forth and uh, pretty much kill your opponents that way next we have the fire fin splat charger pretty much this a little bit different um, a few different things it does have the splash wall which is kind of cool that you can set up pretty much in front of you what I like to do is pretty much uh, set up a splat wall and just snipe from behind it. If anybody tries shooting at it, uh, the splat wall will go, will go down first. And while that goes down, you can retreat and get out of there and move to a different place. Or jump back to spawn with super jump. It's one of the things I like to do with this weapon when I was first starting out using it. Um, suction bomb launcher as well is a very, very good thing. I would say if you want more, this is more of like a splat zone type of charger. If you want to use it in that, I think that's what it's a little bit more viable for. Uh, just because it has the uh, suction bomb launcher and that covers a lot of terrain, especially in like splat zone um, where you're sitting up and you can just throw suction bombs down and get a lot of kills that way. You cover a lot of the splat zone. Um, whereas for this regular splat charger, it's more of a uh, more of like a rainmaker if you want to use in rainmaker just because it has the stingray and the uh, splat bombs. Otherwise, it's very, very viable. Um, as we can see here, I'll be going for the uh, suction bomb launcher, which again, more better for like the uh, splat zones, honestly. And I guess it's decent in the league. Like I said, these two are probably the best to start out with uh, when you're just first starting out and getting into chargers. 
Uh, next, you got my favorite weapon uh, charger in the game, the splatter scope, which I honestly think it needs a huge buff. The splatter scope and the leader 4K need a huge buff, but I'll go over that in a different video. Um, it has the same, pretty much the same uh, as the uh, regular uh, splat charger. It has the sub, or the splat bomb, and the stingray, which are absolutely great on this set. Having the scope lets you be a lot more accurate. You are a little bit more susceptible to like side attacks, but what I've learned is, again, like I said, you can throw down a splat bomb. Um, when you get co close range opponents that are trying to splat, you can probably splat them before they get used sometimes. Uh, but if you miss, sometimes I also miss as well, and then you end up getting killed. So uh, it's very hit or miss. It takes a lot of skill to probably use, along with all the chargers. It take, they take a lot of skill to use. It's not one of those kind of weapons you're going to be picking up and just using on like day one. It takes a lot of like time and effort to put in, at least using effectively. And uh, right here is a little bit of uh, corner shots. I'll be going over towards the end of this video as well. I'll be talking a lot of stuff about that. Um, next, we have the uh, yeah, what does he call it? The Firefin Splatter Scope. It's a bit similar. Again, pretty much the same as the uh, Firefin Splat Charger, just because it just has the scope on the on the end. Uh, one thing I want to mention as well is you can actually hold your charge uh, with the regular Splatter Scope uh, Splat Chargers. So for the Splat Charger and the Fire Flint Splat Charger, you can actually hold your charge for I think up to like, I think three seconds it is, uh, under ink. However, you st still glow, your charge will still glow under ink and your opponents can still see you. So I think that's, uh, I mean it's cool if you want to move around and get out of harm's way, but I think that's uh, not really the best. I mean for your start for starting out it's kind of cool, but uh, again this is pretty much the same as these a regular splat charger. Not really too much different apart from like adding a scope. Uh, it has decent range. A little bit, pretty much they have the, I think the same range of the splat charger and the firefin splat charger. Um, now we get into the leader 4k, the longest range weapon in the game. The range is great on this but the charge speed absolutely sucks. I honestly think they need to give this thing another buff as well. They need to give the fire scopes and the uh, leader 4, 4k and the 4k scopes uh, another buff. Honestly, I'm talking like, like way half track shots. This is, I mean, this is good range right here. It hits like way far away, especially on certain tracks. Um, it's very, very good for tower control and stuff like that, just because you can hit so far away and stand so far away and get so many kills. Uh, it, the charge speed is a little bit slower, and you're a little lot more susceptible to close range attacks, just because um, you have nothing to really defend yourself with. Once they get close, you either run or you're dead. Honestly. Um, one thing I like to do is set up ink mines pretty much close to like where you think opponents will flank you from behind and uh, once the ink mine goes off you know that somebody's there and you either turn around and kill them with a full charge or you just run um, along with the uh, also has the uh, ink storm which is kind of cool for uh, splat zones and, and inking out your opponents just so they can't pretty much hide from you you can just snipe them from that way from that range uh, the custom leader 4k with the squid beacon and the bubble blower, which I'll go over here. Um, squid beacon, I honestly, when I first started uh, Chargers, I really didn't know what it was for. I thought it was kind of a useless sub. Uh, then I actually, I didn't know how to super jump at the time, but it's actually for super jumping. Uh, you pretty much go to your, click to your map on X, and uh, if you see a beacon that's still up and does not is not down or does not get killed or, or destroyed by the opposite team, you can super jump into that beacon and it'll actually destroy the beacon, but it'll let you super jump there. Uh, which is kind of cool. Definitely for a uh, sniper and a charger user like this, just because you can set up a beacon behind you, like far off, if you happen to get splatted and the beacon's still there, you can ha hop right back to your beacon and be in the same place. So it's kind of cool. It also has the bubble blower, which uh, you can hit the bubbles. It causes like a big ass explosion. As long as your opponents don't shoot down the bubbles. So It also ca causes a distraction, so if you need a distraction, hit the bubble blower and just get the hell out of there. Uh, now we have the e Leader 4K Scope, another one of my favorite weapons in the game. Not as good as the Splatter Scope in my opinion, the Splatter Scope is probably the most solid, uh, at least for my stance, uh, charger in the game, uh, not including the Bamboozler or the GooTuber. Again, insane range. Uh, like I said though, they need, they need to give another range buff. I'm talking like half track shots, which I'll go, like I said, I'll go over in a different video, but uh, very, very good range, insane range on here. 
Um, you can sit from way far away, like I said, and just snipe on this town. Has the same sub in the uh, special as the regular Elite 4K. I think this is, yeah, the regular Elite 4K. Only thing different about this is it has a scope. Um, ink mines, again, like I said, are good just for setting them up in places where you won't be able to see. Uh, so you're sitting on top of, like, the, uh, uh, whatever that track is. Sturgeon, I think it's the Sturgeon Shipyard, or it's the one with the train. I forgot what the, I don't know what the track name is, but one with the train. Uh, you sit on the side, or up on the ledge, you can put the, uh, ink mines down, and you're able to just, uh, find out whoever's going to be sneaking up behind you. And it has the same, uh, the ink storm or whatever as well. Now we get into the custom leader 4K again, pretty much the same as the regular custom leader uh, 4K. Uh, just had the scope, the same range, uh, very very good range, uh, with the squid beacon and the bubble blower. Like I said, bubble blower causes a huge explosion. It's a great distraction. It also causes a lot of ink spread. So if you if you bubble blow and it's like a splat zone uh, time, and uh, it's that mode, then it, it's great for that as well just because they can slowly float towards the splat zone. You don't have to be like right by it and then just splat right down. You can shoot them and it'll actually uh, cause a big explosion. Anybody that's by it is going to be getting a, a really, really big uh, splat as well. So that's kind of cool. There's some corner snipes. Not really the most accurate. Like I said, there was a bit of lag when I was recording this. But um, yeah, apart from that, I think this is the, I think this is the last one in the game because I didn't include I never included, like I said, I never included the uh, YouTuber or the Bamboozler MK, so, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for these, and I have the Bamboozler here, and I, I still don't even, I haven't even bought the YouTuber, so that's kind of, kind of cool. I really do want to actually use the YouTuber, though, I, it's one of those things that, it's really kind of weird to use, it's a very situational weapon. Uh, as for recommended abilities, ink saver main. Uh, if you're gonna be a charger, I think max like a full tank of ink gets like four good shots in, especially I think I think like three and a half. I think like three with the leader 4K. Uh, ink recovery up, special charge up is really great. Uh, ink saver sub, last ditch effort is also very very great. Um, respawn punisher is very very situational. Actually, it's controversial. I wouldn't say it's situational. Um, do you want to give your opponents a one, I think like a one and a half second more of respawn time, but you take a little bit more penalty for that and let your teammates um, pretty much uh, benefit from you going down that early or going down for longer time, or do you just not want that at all? I don't know. Uh, stealth jump is also good as well if you want to jump without being seen, having a marker. A quick respawn. I mean, if he gets flat and have quick respawn, all quick respawn abilities, he'll be respawning a lot faster and you're able to go back out to the place you were and uh, get some more splats. I have a bit of gameplay footage for you guys. I'm just going to go over this with you guys. Uh, pretty much uh, whatever I'm really doing in this, I'm going to explain for you guys. Uh, this is actually the, I forget what type, type of track this is. I forget all the names of the tracks. Um, Pretty much it was Rainmaker at this point. I think it was recorded a few days ago as well. It's been a shit ton of time making this video. So, any support is appreciated, like I said. Um, just pretty much me getting some snipes. If you guys... I was actually using the Splatter Scope, my favorite charger, and my main charger that I usually use. Um, just pretty much going around getting some snipes. And... Uh, Pretty much, you have to stay in the background. What I'm doing right now is just pretty much staying in the background. I'm not going really, really close unless my teammates are pretty much carrying the Rainmaker. Um, I'm looking for teammates that are not paying attention to me. Um, just like right here, you can pretty much snipe ink checks. One of the things I really love to do is just snipe ink checks out of the sky. Um, I think there's a lot of, I think there's an ink jet with one of the rollers and with the ink brush. And I uh, really just like sniping those out of the sky. They do not know what hit them. Um, Getting a little bit close there, so I had to retreat. Uh, I was going to snipe far away. My opponent got, or my teammates got there before. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty much just waiting. One of the things you have to do with the charger, and I think it's one of the things you really got to adapt to as well, from possibly switching from like another weapon, 
if you're used to like using like a shooter in like for say like Rainmaker like what we're using right now um, now right here I'm actually flushing out an opponent with uh, Stingray which is what the Stingray is meant to do uh, it's go it goes through walls you flush out opponents and you just go wherever you hit an opponent you go back and forth that's how I usually do it this guy see if you can get any splats or at least get damage to the point where your teammates can kill him in like one hit or get a little bit of chip damage off um, I what I was saying now shit uh, now right here I got splatted from behind or like from the side I wasn't really paying attention there I couldn't really do anything I was trapped in the enemy ink but um, right here is a little bit of a corner snipe or a peeking is how they call it uh, Pretty much peeking your what it pretty much all it is is it's peeking around a corner. Uh, having a scope lets you peek around the corner a little bit better than actually not having a scope. Um, so kind of cool. Definitely catches your opponent off guard on certain tracks as well. There'd be some tracks where you can like peek around corners and you see a point there and you just randomly snipe them. They do not know what hit them. Especially if you just keep sniping them around the corners, or if you keep sniping the same person, they're definitely really going to get annoyed, and they're eventually going to hunt you down. Damn, I just, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I just sniped that right out of the air. I love when I just snipe right, the, you can snipe uh, jets right out of the air. It takes a lot of precision. I don't think it's, I couldn't really do it without the scope. I think the scope lets you see a lot better, especially when I have like, I don't really have the best of eyesight, especially when it comes to, like. Uh, stuff from like far away at least in this game I think the scope really helps me out that's why I really like the scope part alright I prefer to use the scopes better than just like not having one now right here is where I use the splat bomb by advantage I threw the splat bomb dump shake it off splat bomb down um, predicting my opponent where to go and uh, actually rolled right into the splat bomb got a nice snipe right here uh, you can see the uh, the um, super jump arrow that's what I like to do as well just sit there and wait till the super jump arrow they pop right down you just snipe them and they go right back to spawn very very fun to do especially if they get super pissed off at you and they, <laughs> they try following you around the map I have had that, had that happen like way too much times um, not really much else here honestly I'm just pretty much wrapping this game up just trying to get the last few kills in here this was pretty much this video I wasn't really trying to win in this video I was just trying to demonstrate a few snipes uh, Splat Bomb got me a few of those kills right here they're not even paying attention to you again if, you're, if your opponent's not paying attention to you if they have a sniper on your team or a charge on your team you're gonna be getting a sniped a lot so a word of advice if they have a, a charger or like a leader 4k you always gotta look where those things are just because if you're not paying attention you're randomly gonna get sniped every damn time so that's one of the things Chargers really take advantage of. And uh, we won the game there, so I guess it really didn't matter. Like I said, I was really just trying to demonstrate some snipes and uh, stuff like that. So let me know if you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, if you guys want more videos like in the future, if you possibly want an in-depth guide to, uh, per se, like blasters, ink brush, um, anything like that, shooters, possibly like a Splat Brella, the Brella class, sloshers. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. And if you guys have anything else to add. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.